Hello and welcome. My name is Mike, and it's not that unusual to see someone run through an airport. Usually they're late for a flight or whatever. But it is quite unusual to see someone run out of an airport and then seemingly disappear forever. But that's exactly what happened to Lars Mittank, and I have the CCTV footage to prove it. Lars Mittank is, was, a 28-year-old German who disappeared on July 8, 2014, near Varna Airport in Varna, Bulgaria. What happened to him and why did he sprint out of the airport? Let's take a look at his mysterious story. On June 30th, 2014, 28-year-old Lars Mittank travelled to the seaside resort of Golden Sands, Bulgaria, vacationing with five former schoolmates, all in their late 20s. Lars was described as just a generally nice guy. He had lots of friends, he had a girlfriend, he got on really well with his parents, and he had a decent job at the local power plant. On July 6th, 2014, Lars got into a fight with four other men after a night of drinking in a McDonald's. Mittank, a fan of the football club Werder Bremen, had differences of opinion with fans of Bayern Munich. Lars was alone at the time and he promptly got the shit beaten out of him. The fight resulted in Mittank suffering from a ruptured eardrum. At the end of his trip, Due to the ruptured eardrum, a doctor advised him not to fly. A change in cabin air pressure could make it worse, and he was prescribed an antibiotic named Sephirozin, and later referred him to a hospital. His friends wanted to stay with him, but Lars insisted he was fine on his own and could fly home the next day. However, as this was at the end of their holiday, and they had only booked one week at the hotel, Lars needed to find somewhere else to stay as it was high season, every room was booked out. Eventually he did find one place with vacancies, Hotel Colour. The rooms were cheap and it was close to the airport. It was around this time though, when he was alone in his new hotel, that his behaviour changed. He called his mom from his room. He was whispering, acting strangely. He told her to cancel his bank cards. He said he was being followed. He was looking for a place to hide. But then he hung up. Later that night, he texted her about his antibiotics, which doctors routinely prescribed for ear infections. What is Zephyrosim 500? After he disappeared from the airport, the police checked the hotel's security cameras. They found him pacing up and down the foyer, looking out the window, hiding in the elevator. At 1am, he left the hotel for an hour before returning to his room. No one knows where he went for that one hour, just wandering about maybe? The next morning he called his mom again. He said that the people who were chasing him were getting close. On July 8th, 2014, just after sunrise, Lars Mittank arrived at the airport to catch his flight home to Germany. He stepped out of the taxi, picked up his bags, and walked into the departures hall. He still needed an okay from the airport doctor. He walked into Dr. Kostakostov's office, dropped his bags on the floor, and sat on a chair. He was still acting strange. It was just a standard checkup, Kostov said, but he was really nervous and erratic. Kostov examined Matank's ear. Everything was fine. He could get on the plane. But the paranoia festered. He didn't trust the medication he'd been given for his ear pain. Looking back, the whole thing was bizarre, Kostov said. 
a construction worker entered the room as the terminal was being refurbished. Matank started to tremble. He muttered something under his breath. Then he said, I don't want to die here. I have to get out of here. Then in a flash, he ran out of the terminal without his luggage as if someone or something were chasing him. He stopped at the main entrance for a brief second before he ran across the parking lot, climbed over an eight foot barbed wire fence and disappeared into the woods. and he was never seen again. Matank's wallet, cell phone and passport were still in his backpack. All he had were the clothes on his body, a yellow t-shirt, jean shorts and white sneakers. Then the search for Lars began. The police searched the area where he was last seen with drones, then cadaver dogs, but they found nothing. His mother hired a private detective. He watched the airport video over and over. He contacted hospitals and homeless shelters. He traveled to Varna and handed out missing person flyers. There were sightings, but the police couldn't validate them. A year after he disappeared, a trucker said he saw him a tank hitchhiking on a deserted road near Varna. There was a homeless man in Poland who looked just like him. Someone claimed to have met him in Canada and posted about it on Reddit. Apparently, this homeless dude who looked just like Lars said, and I quote, Whoa, give tease here, I am telephone. So, if any Germans are watching, um, if that made any sense to you phonetically, let me know. Whoa, give tease here, I am telephone. Huh. There have been a few false reports around the world. In Brazil, for example, here's another one. People thought this was him. It turned out it was someone else who was missing for a couple of years. So what did happen to Lars? He could have planned the disappearance. Maybe he wanted to start again. It should be noted, Bulgaria has one of the highest rates of human trafficking in the European Union. That's a possibility. I don't really think it's likely. More likely, it was the drugs that messed him up made him incredibly paranoid. Due to that, maybe he overdosed and his body is somewhere. Just hasn't been found yet. Did he have an undisclosed medical condition? His friends said he was fine up until the point he was alone with drugs. Likely the beating he took in McDonald's that night after the argument about football gave him a concussion, brain damage. Sometimes these things can take a couple of days to kick in. That combined with drugs, alcohol, lack of sleep and being alone. Perfect cocktail for paranoia and, you know, doing something crazy. Who knows if we will ever find Lars Matank, but his family are going through one of the worst pains imaginable right now, never having the closure, so I only hope that one way or another they get that sorely needed closure about what happened to him. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see some more videos, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Mike out.